Hi guys, it's Kelly Lettavola here, and I'm back with another video for Neat and Tangled. We are nearing the end of the July 2017 release, and there's been a ton of amazing projects on the blog, so if you haven't seen that, go over and check it out. But today, we are looking at Puppy's Favorite Things. So I cut about four masks of these dogs, and since I, I wanted to create a puppy party, I'm laying them all out so that I can get the placement for them, and I'm using my Mini Misty, um... And realistically, in hindsight, I should have been using the Big Misty the whole time, but I wasn't. Anywho, so what I'm doing is I'm laying out all of the masks for all of the accessories for the dogs I'm going to use. There's a ton in this set. I ended up using the party hats, the cupcakes, and the presents. So I'm laying these all out because I had to cut the masks anyway in order to stamp them. So these are just really helpful tools that I can use in order to line my stamps up then pick them up with the Misty, remove my masks, and everything will stamp exactly where I want it to. I won't have to worry about, um, did my cupcake stamp where it needed to so that the dog's actually holding it? Is my hat centered on the dog? So this is just a really um, kind of easier way to do that. I left the masks in place for the other hats, so I will know where to stamp those when the time comes. Stamping an intense black ink from Simon's Stamp because I'm going to be coloring these with Copics. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and stamp those down and then mask them and then move on to the next bit of stamping. So I think that this set is totally adorable. Um, it, it's so I'm a dog person. Some people are cat people, some people are dog people. I am a dog person. Um, I've had a dog my whole life. I currently have a dog. Um, I really wanted a. I wanted an English Bulldog. I wanted a fat little 40 pound English Bulldog that would sit in my lap and just be adorable. And what I ended up getting was a Boxer Mastiff mix that's like pushing 70 pounds. But um, yeah, somebody left her on the streets of the city that I work in. And so I ended up bringing her home. And she's awesome. And she's my son's best friend. And so God gives you good things. Anywho, so now I'm st I masked all of the accessories and I'm going to go ahead and just keep stamping them. So I'm stamping the hat again. I'm stamping the dog down this time. And then I'm just going to keep using those same masks over and over again um, so that everything kind of just lines up. Uh, you can see that the little present there is perfectly lined up in between his paws. Um, just something of note, I didn't use any of the dies. There is dies for this particular set. Um, but if you have the kitty's favorite things, if you're a cat person and not a dog person, and you have kitty's favorite things, um, there's a die in there that will cut the paws um, so that you can pop them up so that they're holding an object. And that die also works for kitty's favorite things. It will, it's, it will fit both paws of the animals. So like I said, I'm just going to continue stamping, so much stamping, so much masking. Um, I just thought it would be cute to have like a little party. So now I'm moving all of my masks up because I wanted to do a distress ink background. So I want to make sure all the things at the top are masked off. And then I'm just going to use, um, what did I use? Uh, Eclipse masking paper, just a big kind of sheet of it at the bottom to mask all of that off. And then I figured whatever um, wasn't filled in with the Distress Ink, I would just do it with my Copics because it would just be little pieces, parts in between each dog. So I'm using the Distress Oxides. I'm going to start with the, um, what is that, Crack Pistachio. And I'm not going to take it all the way up. I'm kind of going to have like a little gradient going. So I wanted to leave the white at the top. I'm just rubbing this in in between the dogs um, and a little bit ways up beyond the dogs at the top. And then at the bottom is where I'm going to add in the Broken China um, just to kind of give it a little bit of dimension. <laughs> Inadvertently, what ended up happening... Um, oh, and I also... I'm not working on watercolor paper. I'm working on Nina 80-pound uh, paper. But I really love the little splotches, the, the little white splotches that you get with the oxide inks. So I did just use um, a little brush and sprinkle that on. So anyway, when I removed the masking, as you can see here, is what happened was I had like this perfectly diagonal line and it looked like there was a wall behind my puppies. So I was like, oh, well, what if I just turn it like into a little scene and make it into a little room? So that's what I opted to do. 
Before I get to the coloring, um, some of the dogs you can see I wiped off the patch on his eye before I stamped it. Some of them I'm going to add spots to. Um, one of them I'm going to make a Dalmatian. Um, one of them I gave him two patches. He looks like he's wearing a little mask. <laughs> um, and then I also added some details into um, the party hats. I made striped or polka dotted um, just to add some some interest to the scene so that there were all different kind of, of puppies attending this party. So for the floor, I picked um, kind of like a navy combination. This is usually my go-to combination for blue jeans. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and fill in all of the areas of the floor with the lightest color, which is a B93. And you can see how it really starts to look like a room there once the bottom's filled in. I'm going to make the back darker than the front. Um, just to kind of play up that uh, perception a little bit that it is an actual room. I feel like I should have warned you in the beginning to like get a cup of coffee and have a snack because this is a long video. There was just so much Copa coloring and I wanted you to be able to see um, the different textures that you can get with or the different looks that you can get with this one dog. Um, I mean I made this whole card with one three by four set. Um, and I think that they're cute. I don't I don't love the um, color combination of the cracked pistachio and the navy quote unquote carpeting, uh, but that was my own doing. So I don't have anybody to blame for that but me. But I think it's just because they're a little bit more subdued colors and I like brighter colors. They're not per se ugly on their own. I just don't know that I love them together. But anywho, um, so we're just going to keep adding the darker color to the back. We're leaving the lighter colors up front. The one dog, you could um, see his feet. So I did add a little bit of shading underneath his feet with the darkest color. And then I'm just going to work. I worked from darkest or lightest to darkest. And now I'm going to work back out from darkest to lightest just to blend everything together. Um, still leaving that lightest edge up front. Uh, again, just helping with that perception of it being a room um, and that background being a wall. So now once that's done, there's some areas that um, the masking wasn't perfect. And what I like to do for that is I just get out my little hex chart with all the Copics that I own and then I pick the colors that are closest to it and then just fill them in with Copics. Nine times out of ten you can't even see it. And that one time that you can, I just pick another color and fix it. So for the accessories, I'm not going to show you the coloring of all the accessories because this video is already ridiculously long. But I picked a rainbow of colors and then I just did one layer coloring. I didn't do any shading. I just filled in each individual um, area with just one layer of color because I'm going to do all of my shadings with my grays. So that way I didn't have to have 800 colors even though if I'm being honest I have quite a few anyway. So I picked up all my C's, um, C1 through 9, I have every other one. I don't feel the need to own all of them. And then I'm going to add the shading to these items with the grays. If you saw a previous video I did for Neat and Tangled, um, I showed where you can shade with your grays and then put a color over it. So here I put the color down already. I'm going to shade with the grays and kind of blend them into each other. Um, if you're, and you'll see me do it at the end, uh, well, oh, I forgot that hat, but you'll see me do it at the end if for some reason you feel like your gray shading is too much and is overpowering the color that you already have down there, then just go back over it with the, the base color, whatever color you had originally colored it, and it should help soften out some of that shading. So I'm adding shading to the sides of each of the hats, the sides of each of the collars, the sides and the bottoms of the cupcakes, um, the bottoms of the uh, frosting on the cupcakes I'm adding a little bit of shading to. I didn't add any shading to the pom-poms or the bows. Um, you can see this present down here on the left. It's got the yellows and the greens, so the gray is pretty strong. Um, it's pretty visible. Same thing here with this orange hat. And I did, I'll go back in once I realize that I didn't shade it with the C5. But you can just blend all of those things out and... Um, it's really easy to see how you don't have to do a ton of work to get good shading, especially the hat that um, 
rainbow colored hat on the side there. You, it doesn't even look like gray shading. It just looks like it's a more round object, um, which is the game plan, really. So again, um, <laughs> when you're coloring so many objects, it's so easy to forget one here or forget one there. And I try to color them as I catch them. Um, so I blended that all out with the C1 and then the colors that I felt like kind of got eaten up by that gray, I'm just going to go back in and um, just kind of reapply those colors so that I can get that, um, retain that brightness that I originally had um, and not have it just completely grayed out. So once I have all of those colored, then we're going to start coloring the actual dogs. So for this little Dalmatian puppy, I added a bunch of spots with a Copic Safe writing pen. Um, it's a that's the one that I use to add all the details, and I'm going to color him white. But white objects are not just white. White objects also have shading. So when you're coloring something white, you're adding in the shadows. So you can see with the C's, I used a C1, a C3, and a C5. All I'm doing is adding the shadows in. So there's going to be shadows where his ears lay over his face. There's going to be a little bit of shadows on the outside of his ears because they aren't flat, they're round. Shadows underneath his chin, shadows um, in his little, the crooks of his little elbows where he would be holding an object. There's going to be shadows underneath his paws. Um, and then toward the bottom, um, I typically add shadows, like on his tail, like I would add the shadows to the bottom of his tail. I picked from the C5 working out um, to the C7 and the C9. I just colored the random little dots so that they would be kind of different colors, different strengths of color. For some of the larger dots, I did add um, some of the shading with the C7 to the ones that were already colored with the C5, just to um, give them just a little bit of something that was different. So we're gonna fill in those little dots. You can tell once I start coloring with these um, that sometimes their noses are not particularly bright. Part of that is um, using a Copic Safe ink, sometimes it isn't as um, vibrant as it could be. The other part of that is I, you know, the ones that I wiped off their um, patches, it was like unavoidable to get the nose as well. So I picked out a bunch of browns and I'm going to color them a couple of different ways. So the one that you saw in the background was like really smooth coloring. This one is going to be pretty much smooth coloring as well. It's just going to have a little bit of texture to kind of emphasize his snout. This is one way that you can color your dogs. So I colored it completely with my lightest color, and now I'm going to start adding in some shading. I'm going to flick the color from his nose. Um, I'm also going to add the shading. This shading is always going to be in the same place because I'm coloring the same dogs. So the shadow is going to be, again, on the face where his ears are, uh, on the outside of his ears, underneath his chin, in the little crook of his elbow. I'm going to add some shading to the bottom of his paws, underneath that cupcake, and um, on the rare occasion that you can actually see his little puppy dog legs, I'll be adding shading kind of to the outside as well as the inside, leaving the highlight in the center of his leg. Again, we're working lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. I have a tendency to use the um, flicking motion even in my smooth coloring. And what that means is I'm just using the tip of the marker in very light pressure to kind of flick the color away so that it blends a little bit nicer. That's what you see me doing on his nose. For some of the darker areas, um, sometimes I'm just putting a little line down. That's it, because I don't want to add a ton of color. I just want to... Um, kind of bolster up that contrast. And then once I get out to my darkest color, I'm going to work back toward the lightest again so that everything blends out. I tend to add my heavier color the second time around. Um, everything for me stays pretty light until I make it out to my darkest color. And then I adjust my coloring accordingly as I work back toward the lightest, which should be the highlight. So the two colors you should see the most of when you're coloring are your, um, if you color with three colors, is the one in the middle. If you color with four, it would be those two mid-tones. Those should be the ones you should see the most of. The darkest color um, should be very little, and the lightest color should be very little, because those are your deepest shadows and your brightest highlight. 
So you can see that I colored another little dog over here in the same colors, and I colored him kind of like a long-haired dog. I will show you that. It's just going to be in a different color. I wanted to do kind of a um, curly-haired dog. I grew up in my house with cockapoos. Um, they have hair, not fur, so they don't shed, which my mother thought was fantastic. So they are um, soft, fluffy little, little curly dogs, and they're a adorable and if you have allergies they're great because they don't have fur so really hypoallergenic but anyway I'm just scribbling circles that's it like that I promise you that is all I am doing just scribbling circles I'm careful not to make them too tight of a circle I don't want it to be really dense color um not that there's anything wrong with that but you're going to get more texture the kind of the looser you are with your circles I'm still adding the shading in the same areas that I was before as far as like the darker colors, but instead of drawing lines, I'm doing the circles and I'm just doing them right over top of each other. Copics are transparent. If you put a lighter color over a darker color because there is a higher concentration of that colorless blender in the lighter color, it will lift some of the color. This allows you to create a lot of really good textures. The other thing with this one, I did... Um, go out just a little bit darker and I went right over his patch in this situation. You can still see the little patch over his eye. I'm obviously not covering up that black line but I felt no need to segregate it from the rest of his fur. The last thing that I'm going to do um, to kind of bolster up that texture is I'm going to bring in my colorless blender. So I'm going all over it with all, everything with my lightest color and everything's all nice and and blend it out but the colorless blender is really going to start to lift some color and it'll create lots of great texture so he really looks kind of fluffy if you do know line coloring which i gotta be honest i'm basically terrified of so i do it very rarely i like my bold outline I like my little security blanket but if you do that with the um techniques for like the curly hair or the long haired dog that we'll go over shortly um they, it looks amazing. It, it looks so fantastic without that black line to make them really fuzzy. So for this one, we're going to create some more texture and he's going to look kind of like a curly haired dog, but we're going to use stippling. So this is a, um, this is used in actual art, not just stamping card making. And basically it's a series of dots. I use this a lot for um, shading, for making things more interesting. And this will for sure make your dog more interesting. It will give him some texture. The idea is the more compact your dots are, the darker your color will be. The looser your dots are, the softer your color will be. So you could do a shaded um, object in a completely monochromatic, like you use the same pen, but because you're varying how many dots you're putting down in what area, it creates shading. So here I am using different colors, but I am not bringing those colors down as far. I'm still creating that same shading that I did on every other dog, on the curly haired dog, on the smooth haired dog, on the Dalmatian, all of that. Still, still shading in those same areas that I was before. He's not just a one note color, but because we're adding those little dots, it, it's going to, um, really just bring out that texture and, and it looks super cool. By the time we're done, it doesn't going to look like he's filled in with a series of dots. It's going to look like, you know, he has fur that has that texture. And for this one, I am going to go all the way out to um, that 100, which is the black, and just add those dots right along the areas in which I would have normally done a line. So just to really um, bump up that contrast and make him a little bit different than like the Dalmatian or any other dogs. I did um, the one in the bottom right hand corner I colored off camera. He is a smooth dog and I also colored him with the C1s, more of a white um, style puppy. Um, but he's just, this one's going to be just different and this is something else that you can try. You don't have to limit this to just animals. Stippling, I mean, you can shade anything with stippling, and it's super cool. Another one that you can do is called cross-hatching, um, and that is making a, a series of diagonal lines. And the closer the lines are together, the more shaded it is, the further they are apart, the less shading there is. And again, you can do a whole 
image or portrait or whatever using those shading techniques and use only one pen. So again, from lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest, I'm taking the lightest color over all of the dots um, just to kind of blend those in. Then I'm going to switch to my warm grays. If you watch my videos, you know that these don't come out of their shell very often. I, um, I just prefer a cool gray, but we got a lot of dogs here, folks. A lot of dogs. So I colored the one in the bottom. I'm going to end up making his spots brown. For this one, I wanted to do kind of the, um, you ever seen like a, a it's like a mop haired dog. Like they just got long moppy strands. So that's kind of the look I was going for. Again, this would look substantially better in a no-line coloring situation, but that's not the situation I'm in. I still think it adds some texture. I still think it makes them look different. I'm using that same feathering technique, but I'm doing um, short strokes just kind of all over his body with the lightest color. And then I'm just going to keep adding those on. So again, still adding the shading in the same areas that I always have been, um, but I'm just making short little strokes. So I'm barely touching the paper with the tip of the pen. I'm kind of flicking out to give him kind of like that moppy long haired look. Um, the one on the that's catty cornered to him to the bottom left and the browns, I did kind of the same thing there, but my strokes were not as short. Say that three times fast. My strokes were not as short. Um, so he has, he almost look, kind of looks like a bunny to me, if I'm being honest. He kind of looks just a, a little bunny-like, but whatever. We invite, we don't discriminate. We invite everybody to our party. You know, maybe there's a bunny there. You don't know. Anywho, um, so I'm doing the, the flicking just continually over the, the same areas. I'm building up that shadows, working back out to my lightest color to kind of blend everything in. Um, so that the shadows are in the right area, but we still have a good bit of texture going on. And this particular technique is, is really kind of quick, um, just because you're not laboring over where the, where the shading's going. You're just doing really quick little strokes. So I did, um, I wasn't happy with the way that the little patches looked with no shading, so I did go in and shade those. I also was not happy with kind of like the cutoff point of his hair, so I did go back in and kind of add just a little bit more shading to his face. So at this point, this is all of the Copa coloring. We've colored all of the dogs. I wanted to add some white gel pen details. Um, it's fun to add the ones in the black pen, but it's fun to add the ones in the white too. If you watch my videos, you know what time it is. It's time to outline this whole thing because I have an obsession with a bold black line. That's just me. This is completely unnecessary. You do not have to do this portion of the card. It will still look fine. So now everything's good to go. We're all colored. I'm going to add some clear wink Casella just to the accessories. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my Mini Misty to stamp the sentiment, which says, Hot Diggity Dog, it's your birthday. Um, and in my head, because I have a toddler, I automatically sing the Mickey Mouse song. If you know that song, you're welcome, because now you're singing it too. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to do is add some black enamel accents for their eyes to just really make them pop up. And then that is the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I realize you spent a large portion of your time. If you've made it this far, you're awesome. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.